Hello, this is the second part of the first lecture on general topology. And in this part, we're going to talk about open neighborhoods of a point and of a set. And in, so in the first lecture, we talked about topological spaces and topologies. And the general idea was if you have a set X, we can create, we can declare a topology on it, um, which is a collection of subsets of X, uh, we, we call S. And we, these are what we declare to be open sets, as long as they follow three rules, three um, axioms, which were about unions and intersections, finite intersections, and that everything and nothing in the empty set have to be in that collection. So now, for any point inside of a topological space, it's in, within at least one topological, uh, at least one open set, i.e. the set of everything, right? Um, but in general, a point could have many open sets that it's within. And so this idea of open sets containing a point is actually very important. It's an important tool that we'll uh, use intensively as we go on in these lectures. And so the definition of an open neighborhood is this. An open set containing P, and it's just some point P in our set X, is called an open neighborhood of P. So that's pretty straightforward, not much really to explain there, but let's go through some examples to make sure we have a good idea. So let's say in this first, okay, let's go through uh, these, these examples one by one. The first one, we have our open sets being unions of open intervals, and we've talked about this example before. But so for instance, let's say our P is the number seven. Then we'll, some examples of open sets containing it are the set of everything again, or we could do the set of from say zero to nine, um, because that is an open set, it's an open interval, it contains seven, so we're good. Or we could have something a little more complicated, zero to nine, and then say um, 10 to 13. This is a union of open intervals, so it's an open set, and it contains seven. So these three are all open neighborhoods of this set. Okay, next. This second one, we have our, our space A, B, C, D, and we have our open sets A, B, A, B, um, A, B, C, D, and the empty set. Um, and so we know this is going to be a topology. Uh, we already showed that. So let's say we have P being the set a. Now we can um, we can list all of the open sets, uh, all the open neighborhoods of A, because there aren't that many sets. So here, all open sets would be A, A B, A B C D. Th those are all the open neighborhoods of A. Um, on the other hand, there are, some there are some sets containing A that aren't open neighborhoods. So for instance, A, B, C is not an open set. It contains A, but it's not an open set. So it's not an open neighborhood. And this idea is, this differentiation is very important. Okay, go to the next one. So here, in this third example, X is any set, and S is the set of all subsets of X. And so really, if you take any point, just say the point P, P is its own open neighborhood. Or any subset containing, any subset of X containing P is still a um, open neighborhood of P because everything is an open set. So here in the discrete topology was the name. It's, everything's an open set. There's not very much speciality here. There's not very many exceptions, right? Okay, the fourth example. If we have x equals r2 with this basis of s being all open balls, then here, let's say we had a point p. If we have this point p, well, the ball, for instance, the ball centered around p is an open set. So you know, the ball, at P. 
of any radius, right? Um, another example, or in another way to think about this, for any open ball, every point inside that ball has that ball as an open neighborhood. Okay, so, yeah. Okay, the next example, we go down to the next one down. We have this line here. Well, for instance, if we had our point being, say, still on minus 1, 2, 7 again, it's a perfectly good point. Some open intervals, or some open neighborhoods of this point, are 0 to infinity, um, because that, can, that is an open neighborhood for every point in the set, because it's the entire set, right? Um, and some other ones, you know, d, so say um, 6 to infinity, is another open interval, or an open neighborhood of 7, and so on and so forth. We can come up with more. But uh, not, not anything too difficult here. Okay, the last one we had is the trivial topology, if we remember. And here, all we had um, was x was any set, and the only open sets, what we declared to be open sets, is everything and nothing. Um, x and the empty set. And here, for any point p, it's only inside one open set, i.e. this. So there's only one open neighborhood of any point, and that would be x. And so that's, again, not a very interesting topology, which is why we, again, we call it the trivial topology. And so that's the basic idea of, of open neighborhoods. The idea is not too difficult. It seems kind of, why, do we, why would we even need to define this since it's such a, an obvious principle? You could just say an open set containing P. Um, but it's, it's useful to just talk about it this way, and um, it's more evocative in a, in a certain sense. Um, okay, so really that is everything about open neighborhoods of a point. Now there is an idea of a neighborhood, of just a neighborhood of a point rather than an open neighborhood. Um, the difference is an, a neighborhood of a point is a set, so if you have P, you have P, right? You have just like some set containing P. And we don't know if it's open or closed, this other set. But it's a neighborhood if this any set contains an open set, an open neighborhood of P. So it's just like an extension of an open, of an open neighborhood. You take the open neighborhood and anything that contains it is, an, uh, is just a normal neighborhood. And we're not going to really use that too much. Um, however, it is important um, because all neighborhoods of points are what are called filters. And don't worry if you don't know what a filter is. Um, we'll probably go into that later. But this is also, it's just something that I'm throwing out there. So, and really quickly, one last thing is neighborhoods of a set. These are neighborhoods of a point. Neighborhoods, uh, open neighborhoods, sorry, excuse me. Open neighborhoods of a set are exactly what you would expect. An open neighborhood of a set is just an open set that contains the original set. So, for instance, if V is our open neighborhood, and we want it to be an open neighborhood of U, our set U, uh, then V is just an open set that contains U. So if, for instance, we take the standard topology on R, U could be, say, 0 to 2. Note that U is not open. It doesn't have to be open. It could be, um, but it's the same either way. So we could take V to be, for instance, negative 1 to 7, which is an open set that contains 0 to 2. Or negative 1 to 7, 8 to 10. Note also that V is an open neighborhood of itself because it's an open set and it contains itself 
and so it's an open neighborhood of itself. Anyway, that's all for this one. Um, open sets or open neighborhoods of sets are not any more complicated than open neighborhoods of points. And the next portion of this lecture, uh, we'll be talking about interior, exterior, and boundary points of a set. Thank you.